The brain is so powerful, which you highlight often within your book, Hope Not Note. How does a shift in mindset help someone in chronic pain? I think the first comment I need to make is that we have so many friends that are married to an Allison. We do. Most of, it, most of your best friends are all like, friends. their wives are Allie, Allison, Allie, but spelled differently. Yeah. <laughs> when I came into the picture, my name wasn't Allison. I think they were all confused. No, so I, I moved us to the Bs. Yeah. So now we're, now we're in the B eras. And, That's true. And... You do have friends that have Bs <laughs> yeah. and their wives start with B as well. Yeah. So we're, we're moving along the alphabet. <laughs> we just keep creating more friendships until we can get the whole alphabet. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but Allison... I love that you said the brain is so powerful because it, it is. It's three pounds between our skull and it is the heavyweight champion of the world mm -hmm. at three pounds. It is incredibly powerful. It can do, it does everything for us. <laughs> yeah. There's not something that the brain's not involved in. It's very, very powerful. So how can you, how does a shift in mindset help someone in chronic pain? You know, I, I like the word mindset. I also kind of struggle with it a little bit because of how it could be interpreted. I think it's a it's a hot word that people like because they can relate to it and they get what people are saying. Like, oh, I need to change what's happening between my ears. But a lot of times when we hear the word like mindset, it could mean that, you know, you're it's inflexible. Mm. It's it's set, right? Because for example, in football, when you say the cadence, ready, set, hut, when you say set, no one's allowed to move at that point, right? So the word set sometimes kind of gets me a little... Mm. Uh, Grind like, your gears grinds, a little. Grinds my gears a little <laughs> because you're not, you're not stuck. You're, you're, you're not there. The brain is more ready, right? We can still run motions. We can still call audibles. We can still do things from there. So if you're stuck in the set part, call a timeout, mm. get a new play called in. But what I'm getting to with this is that our brain works by prediction. We used to not believe that and we used to not have the science for that, but now the science is showing that it works by prediction. And there's a lot of powerful parts of the brain. And you know, a lot of people will say, oh, this is the area for vision. This is the area for feeling. This is the area for motion. This is the area for fine tuning. This is the area for prediction, the cerebellum, like all these things. Cool fun fact about the cerebellum, it means the little brain, it holds about 80% of the neurons. And, and wow. the entire brain is this little part of it. It does do some fine tuning, but it doesn't do it on its own. Mm. The brain is working together at all times to figure out what is the best outcome. Where should I send the hormones? Where should I send these things? Because I have to budget our energy and I need to figure out when do I need this spike in the fight flight system? When do are we able to get into more thriving and rest and digest? So the brain is constantly predicting and it's not one structure of the brain. It's the entire brain. And there's a lot of neuroplasticity research that shows even when a brain area has been impacted or is no longer able to work from something like a stroke, that you can remap the brain in order to still use that area using different neurons and parts of the brain. Mm -hmm. So there are parts that are kind of in lead, but it relies on the whole team. The reason I say that is because people believe the triune brain, and that is now a psychological myth that there's not the triune brain, there's those parts of the brain, but it all works together to create our outcome. So pain, pain is a prediction. Pain is an output. Sensory info comes up into the brain, goes through the thalamus, the thalamus goes to all these different areas in the brain to figure out what the heck is happening. The fight flight brain says, do we need to protect this? The brain goes, you know, I don't really know what's happening yet. So go ahead and protect it. How does it protect it? I'm going to stiffen it up. I'm going to create the pain response. The brain starts searching, starts to go into more long-term processing. Have I been here before? What's the data on this? How do I become certain in an uncertain situation? Once it starts to get those things, then it goes, oh, okay. Yeah. We don't need to be holding this area tightly anymore. Let's change the messages going to the muscle that's protecting that area. Let's change the sensory perception. Let's change the, the, the pain response. So once we start to know that and understand that about the brain, that it's prediction, then we can start to change the way that we interact with chronic pain because mm. we're not stuck with it. It's not set. It's, it's ready and it's ready to change. And at the end of the day, pain is a request for change. When we get that output of pain, it's our body, it's our mind, it's our spirit saying, you need to change something 
about what you're doing right now because it's not working. And when it's chronic pain, most of the time, these people have gotten these signals over and over and over, but they're just like push through kind of people. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Thank you for that signal, but nope, not going to take care of that. Thanks mm -hmm. for the signal. Not in the right season to take care of it. Thank you for that signal, but nope, I don't want to do that change because it's really scary. Mm. So it just builds up over time. And eventually the sensory system, because we're sensory beings, we have a ton of sensory neurons. We feel our environment. We interact with our environment. But eventually the sensory system goes, well, if you're not listening to part of me, then I'm going to make you feel all of me. And then the brain gets overloaded and it goes protect everything. Protect it all, right? Fibromyalgia, different sensory components, different trigger points. It's your body protecting because it's afraid, mm -hmm. because it's in fear. So when we shift our mindset over to learning that our brain works by prediction models, then we have a really good shot at calling the audible because we can change what the prediction output is going to be by changing the input of what's coming in. I love that. I as you were talking, chronic means like mm -hmm. continuous, right? It mm -hmm. means something along the lines of like, it's continually happening. And if we look at the word chronic in that definition, and then we look at the word pain and the definition that you gave of it's a request for change, that just means our body is in our mind, like there's a constant request for change, which is beautiful, yeah. right? Like the only, what, what's that one quote? The only consistent thing in life or the only predictable thing in life is change oh the only constants change carol dweck yeah in her yeah. book mindset <laughs> i didn't even know that i couldn't have planned that if i tried that's awesome um but yeah so the only constant in life is change mm -hmm. and chronic pain is constant request for change i think that's such a gift but and i i love i love the question and your description of mindset because i think another thing you could say is how does perspective help right mm -hmm. but specifically like i just i'm thinking of so many people in my life that has chronic pain and they think that they're stuck with chronic pain but how are you stuck with a thing that's literally asking you to change yeah. right and so i think inviting that definition into your heart and inviting that definition into your reflection and in your meditation might allow you to get to a place of like well, that doesn't really make sense. Like how, how is, how, how am I being, how am I constantly being asked to change and how is that a bad thing mm -hmm. versus, um, I don't know if this is making sense, but basically like we have the power to make that change. And I had chronic pain for nearly 10 years, like literally nearly 10 years, my late teens and almost all of my twenties were filled with chronic pain. And now I'm great. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I am great. And it's because I'm, I made these changes that were being requested of me mm -hmm. and I needed support. I needed a proper framework. I needed hope as the greatest healing agent, <laughs> I must say. Um, but if I'm not, I mean, I'm special, but I'm not anyone special. Like everyone is special. Everyone has this opportunity. And I, my greatest desire is that people can truly just know that they don't have to live with their chronic pain it's not this thing that's like not changeable i don't know i could go off on a tangent about it but it's like you can change your life and it's great <laughs> yeah i think you should go off on a tangent about it because it's so exciting and, it, and it's what we're passionate about and this request for change it's really well what's the request well the request is that it wants meaningful activity back and what's meaningful activity well, you don't know unless you know yourself and you don't mm -hmm. know yourself because you've gotten so far away from it, from all the stressors yeah. in the world. So there's barriers that need to be breaking down. But how do you break down those barriers? You break it down with love. You break it down with perspective. Well, where does the perspective come from? The perspective has to come from knowledge. Where does the knowledge come from? Well, it has to come from credible science. Yeah. And this is where we need to start looking at. And Dr. Lisa Feldman Barrett, Oh gosh, I could go <laughs> off on, on her work. It's incredible, but really her work has shown us how much our brain truly does work by prediction. Why we don't have this lizard brain that controls us. And people are like, well, I tried to do that, but the lizard, the lizard made me do it. The lizard it made the me lizard. lose my temper. I'm Italian. And this is what Italians do. They hold grudges and they get angry and they get loud and they do this thing. And it's like, no, the only reason you're doing that is because you have a preconceived notion and perspective that that's how this works, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. 
because you can train yourself to not react. You can train yourself to take a pause and go, you know what? I'm not going to reply to this statement or that remark right now because it's going to escalate the situation. And the best thing for me to do for myself and for this person in the conversation is to pause, take a break, digest it, process it, and then come back to it later. But we spend so much time thinking that, oh, the sooner I react, <laughs> the sooner I get my way. And, and then it just adds on more and more, we'll call them micro traumas that build up and build up and build up over yeah. time. And then it gets to the point where your system's screaming at you because it's not who you are. It's not who you were intended to be. Oh, so many people I've, I've, I've worked with, the common thing they say is, I don't know who I am anymore. Mm. Right? Well, wow, what a great place to start Yeah. by finding out that you're a person. And, and you exist and that you have hopes and you have dreams and that you, you are incredible and that, you know, you have, you've said some pretty nasty things and you've treated people really poorly, but at the time you didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. So now let's, let's work on that. Let's work on that pause. Let's work on rediscovering that. And it's so cool when people do, I get to see people doing that through movement. I get to see people doing that through cognitive reframing. I get to see people doing that by just seeing themselves in a mirror as they're moving or as they're doing these other things. And the tears that come out of pure joy that then turn into, how the heck did I let this happen? Mm -hmm. It's such a, a beautiful journey for, for people. But just know, as Brandy was saying, you are, you are not stuck with, with, with chronic pain. From what we've learned, this is a bold statement. I think my mentor, Dr. Dave Boylan, would be proud of me. And, and people with chronic pain, they, they may be challenged by it, but I'm willing to say this mm. boldly. What we've learned from neuroplasticity is that chronic pain is now a choice. Mm. If you want to be stuck with chronic pain the rest of your life, that is a choice that you are making because you do not need to be stuck with it. Mm -hmm. So bold statement, I'll... I, I want to like snap <laughs> like snaps for agreement because it oh, it's just so true and I think that that's one of our greatest desires within our work I hope not nope is to get people to believe this about themselves and I mentioned freedom earlier but it's the same thing with this like we desire your freedom from these preconceived ideas of you having to be this certain way you know and uh, it's just, it's so unfortunate because I know that there's people listening who are in their car or in their small town or in their home and they're like, oh, I'm stuck like this. Or they're just like discouraged, don't have fulfillment, they don't have meaningful activity and they're like, I just feel stuck with this. And they're actually challenged by what we're saying right now because they, they don't see another option. Um, but heck, if you're listening to this right now, that is the first step of the next option like the new option for you is if you're allowing yourself to take the whether you're listening to just this question which will be posted on youtube and it's you know 10 minutes or whatever or you're listening to the whole podcast or you're listening to every episode of our podcast like that is a step in the right direction not that we're the greatest thing since sliced bread by any means but like our desire is pure and the research that we're giving is also like credible research and that we're doing our best to give you not out of our own agenda but out of the belief that you are you're worthy of the best life possible you're worthy of not being stuck in whatever situation you're in you can get out of the chronic pain you can get out of you know abusive situations or even abusive like mindsets that you have if you're verbally abusing yourself all the time because you think that that's what you do because maybe your mom was that exact same way to herself. Like there's all these things that you think like, oh, I have to be this way because I was raised this way or that's what Italians do or whatever <laughs> your uh, heritage is from or whatever. And it's just, it's just not true. Like you don't have to stay in that environment or in that headspace or in that whatever, like you do have the ability to change a life. So change a life. There might be people listening that stop listening <laughs> after that statement because they're like, oh, you think I'm making the choice to have this chronic pain? You think I'm making the choice to live in this discomfort? Mm -hmm. 
And, and I could see why you'd be challenged by that and why you might stop listening. And if that's you, I want you to know that we still love you yeah. and that we're here for you when you decide that you do want to make make that change. And mm -hmm. again, like Brandon, this is this is modern research, and and by modern, we're a good thirty years into it now. <laughs> modern you know it's pretty pretty wild i actually got a, a text the other day from uh, a dear friend of mine that on the news they finally reported that your acl can heal itself within three months and that in this research study 80 percent of the people had that wow and it was on the news and she took a picture and she texted it to me and she goes well you've only been saying this for about eight years now <laughs> i'm like yeah because this is when the research comes out but then for it to get to the mainstream, it takes so long mm -hmm. because the media doesn't want to cover it because it's not as entertaining. It's not spicy. It's enough. not spicy enough. Yeah. So it tends to kind of get swept under the carpet. And then people will, will, will go, well, I need case studies. I need to see case studies. I'm like, no, there's reviews. There's yeah. meta-analysis. There the systematic reviews from like these peer-reviewed journals showing these things now. You don't. You don't need case the case studies they've been done there's plenty yeah. of books that have the case studies in there if you want to live the life of hope and get rid of the nope then let's do it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i think that's fair to say just to repeat what you're saying like case studies are not the answer yeah. and i think that a lot of people are like oh it's a case study like these are real people it's trustworthy no it's trash sorry but it, it's trash like go to peer-reviewed research that is quality and not uh, clickbaity, yeah. you know? But we could go on a tangent about that. If you want us to, ask us a specific question regarding that. Yeah. And, and the last thing I'll say is too, is like, if you're ready to take those steps mm -hmm. and, and, and it's not with us, that's fine. Like, that's that's great. Like our goal is that you are, you get fired up and are excited to take those steps. But as you take those steps, be careful because mm -hmm. when a lot of people become really uncertain with these harder types of conditions, whether it's, it's Alzheimer's, whether it's chronic pain, wh whatever it may be, you know, they get a little bit desperate and mm -hmm. they start going to things in, in the wellness space that have even less evidence mm -hmm. that they would be using in a traditional medicine approach, right? Mm -hmm. Because what we see from the research is that a lot of different things will make you feel a little bit better in the short term and a lot of those things are because you believe that they're going to make you better which is known as a placebo i shall I was please just say that. <laughs> but it's it's because you put your faith in this thing right so the question that we pose is like well what would happen if we didn't have to rely on all these other things hmm. to change the way that you feel think and predict your outputs to be mm -hmm. what if you were able to be empowered with the science and with solutions to really work through these things. And you know what? It might take a little bit longer than going to get a uh, foot bath, <laughs> or I'm trying to think of other examples, but I don't want to open like, up too many cans of worms. But the like salt water pill or whatever. whatever. <laughs> or salt water pill is like, you, you can take those things, right? And, and, but is that really leading to healing? Mm -hmm. Or is that leading to you believing in something again that? is leading to a very short-term response, but you need to keep taking it through throughout mm -hmm. your life versus learning that, wow, my body was made to digest. It was made to filter. It was made to absorb. It was made to become resilient. It was made to fight off infections. It was made to feel good. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't made to be in this chronic pain state and, and you can get out of it. So just, if it's not with us, that's completely fine. Just please make sure that you're with a trusted provider that they might be old, you know, adding their own flair into it, their own different spices, but make sure the recipe is, is based off science. You want to try a little black pepper, a little salt here and there, <laughs> that's fine, but make sure that the recipe itself mm -hmm. is good, right? Like, uh, Italian, you're making pasta sauce. Like, let's not try to make it out of mustard. Yeah. Like, let's let's use a tomato base. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're using a tomato-based solution. <laughs> that's my analogy for the day. Perfect.